Hello and welcome back to my channel. Victor here again, this time around with a brand new tutorial on the essence of cargling. Ah, uh, what did he just say? Does he said cargle? Okay, does such word ever exist? So I may I know you might be wondering, but it's very simple, all right? So Kaggle is synonymous to Google, right? So by the way, Google bought over Kaggle, all right? So Kaggle here is kind of a repository that contains both the codes, I mean now the codes written in a programming language, preferably Python and R, which was the kernel where you can actually run this program on their online interpreter. And as well as the most important thing, so most important thing is what? your data right so you have awesome data sets so you must have come across this in maybe one of your projects where you went on google and you start searching for awesome machine learning projects invariably google redirects you to kaggle because it is a subsidiary now of google or the, of the parent company alphabet maybe all right now what are we going to do in today's tutorial so two things we have to do first is we need to understand how you actually get started with some of your final year projects, all right? And even some projects which you can do out of a passion. If you are ML and a machine learning enthusiast, or even a data scientist, an aspiring data scientist, all right? Or you just wanna play along with most of the codes, or even statisticians that wants to understand how those graphs were generated, right? Because we know traditionally you can compute the graph. First thing we look into are the projects that exist on Kegel, and secondly, we try to go a little bit, uh, we try to take it a little step further by understanding what you can do, you, I mean, as a researcher, what you can do or how you can leverage the power of most of these things that exist and turn it into a research paper, right? If you go any step further, I want to make this commitment to you that this tutorial is going to be less than 10 minutes. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> Let's do this. Welcome back. <laughs> so um, we are going to look into the hands-on section. Come with me as we explore this together. So let's start with this. What is this Kegel actually? So I don't want Kegel.com. Okay. I'm going to leave this now and get back first to Kegel. Okay. So I'm going to Google it now. So Kegel, look at the difference. Okay. Now the difference here is this is going to search for Kegel. But that is visiting the website. Now, look at what I want you to understand here. Okay? Can you see that? Look here. Look carefully. Kaggle is a subsidiary of Google, right? So, it's an online community of data scientists. So, if you are passionate about web development, I'm sorry, this is not the right place for you, right? So, this is an online community of what? Data scientists and machine learning practitioners. Kaggle allows users to find and publish data sets explore and build models right in a web-based data science environment and work with other data scientists and machine learning engineers okay and enter competitions to solve data science challenges okay so let's just understand something here okay so a quick google search just gave me this and here we are we are able to now know that google has following features first it allows you to do what find that means that you'll be looking into some work that has been done by other researchers or machine learning enthusiasts or practitioners alike. You can publish data sets from there. You can also explore. Let's say you randomly want to understand what happens at Kaggle, right? So out of, out of curiosity, you want to like look into that. Again, you'll be able to do what now? Build models, right? In a web-based data science environment. And as well as you'll be able to do what now? Collaborate with other machine learning engineers. That is here. Okay, you can work with other data scientists and machine learning engineers. And finally, more, most, most interestingly, you will be able to what? Uh, solve data science challenges, which in most cases has financial reward. Okay, enough of talking. Let's just dive right into it. Okay, so here we are, and I'm going to visit Kaggle from the search bar itself. Okay, so we are here. Let's visit my official repository. Now, two things will happen here. Okay, when you join, you might not be able to see this. Uh, by the way, this is my old... Uh, Google account. So you might not be able to see this. So in that case, it might prompt you to sign in. Okay. So for me, it says sign out. So this is where we are. And what I'm looking for is, uh, let me work on something that relates to what sentiment analysis. Okay. So this was the, my search history, by the way. Okay. So if I want sentiment analysis is there. All right. So I can just type sentiment analysis. Let's type the keyword sentiment 
okay? Analysis, okay? And just hit search. Now, you see here, you'll be getting 7,781 results. Let's understand these results in a while. Did you see the awesome thing about Kegel here? It has actually grouped them according to what they are. So comments, notebooks, topics, data sets, and competitions with users and blogs. You can sort them according to relevance. You can also sort it according to date. Okay. Now you see here, this was two years ago. And did you see? Now the relevancy here will show you how many people found this useful. Can you see that? Can you see that? Look at it. About 357 of them. Okay. And that was on uh, sentiment analysis, right? See something that I found more useful again. You see, you can see how many of the, the, of the notebooks, how many of them has been uploaded today, last week and last three months. Viewed by so, so, so and not viewed. Now, the size of the data set is also what you want to consider. Let's say you, you are particular about storage, right? You can look at, you can fine tune this by clicking on small. So when I click on small, you see most of those awesome um, web, uh, awesome blogs which we saw has disappeared, right? Now you see very less. Yes, you can see 20 something KB. This is close to um, 1 MB. Then this is 3 MB, like that, okay? Another thing, let me remove this now and get back to the default setting. So you go back here, you can filter this because many of us are used to working with text files and CSV files. So with CSV, you'll be getting the famous IMDB data set, right? For movie review, okay? And then you have your sentiment analysis for financial news, okay? Now you go down here, let me uncheck this. Okay. You, when you talk, go down, you see what well, very importantly, I spoke to you about kernel, right? So kernel is kind of fine. You want to understand in which language this was written. And I will be able to, will I be able to run this also while I'm online? Yes, obviously. I am interested in Python. And this is why almost every data scientist or aspiring data scientist or machine learning enthusiast always prefer Python over every other programming language. Follow me as we explore this together. Papers with code. See, I'm here on papers with code. And did you see here, you get what? Trending research. All right? So you see, on the trending research, you can actually browse, see, already browse the state of art research. You can also get the data set. You can browse them by data set. You can also browse them by methods. Okay, by the way, I'm logged in, okay? If you are not logged in, it's very simple. You can easily sign up, no problem. Now, what we do here is, you see, browse the state of the art research. Now, my interest is, uh, I want to look again into what? Medical imaging, right? Fine, so what I will do, First thing, let's look at this, browse the state of the art research. Feel free to play with this. So when you click on this, did you see here about 4,606 benchmarks and this much task and 3,804 data sets with this and 45,715 papers with code. Now, why did we deviate from Kaggle? Let's get back to Kaggle. Okay, so on Kaggle, when we search for, do you remember? When you search for medical imaging, we found this much, right? Okay. Now, and even if, okay, let's look for the same thing here. We look in, we get into medical imaging in a while. So Kaggle gave us that, but since this was kind of contributed by even those without a degree in medical imaging or even in data science, might really not do that quality work, right? So for me to verify, validate most of their findings, I have extended this a little step further by looking at this which is called what? Papers with code. Now here, see, I clicked on this now and then I'm, I've gotten this computer vision, right? Now, you remember your famous image classification? Yes, object detection, image generation, and denoising. And that's not all, 1,039 tasks. I don't have the time to look into it. Next is natural language processing. You see machine translation, question answering, sentiment analysis, obviously, all right? Now, my interest lies on medical, okay? So medical, I'm having 203 tasks. Now you can continue, let's get there, miscellaneous, speech, recognition, graphs, time series, playing games, computer codes, audio, robots, adversarial network, knowledge base, music, literally, you know, reasoning. Many of the things you want, will be, you will get it from here. Now let's look into my medical imaging, okay? Now I'm here in the medical imaging, what I will do? Click on this to see all the tasks. Because I have seen the first one, medical image segmentation, lesion segmentation, brain tumor segmentation, brain segmentation, cell, so I'm um, like, okay, my, I want to work on e e ECG, right? That is electrocardiography. Yes? Okay. Arrhythmia detection or ECG classification or heart rate vi variability. That is what I want to look into, right? Or maybe I want to know how we diagnose disease. Let's take example of the COVID-19 diagnosis. Please remember here that here also we can look for COVID-19. 
Okay, let me look here. Let me change this back to COVID-19. Okay, why don't we do this? C-O-V-I-D, COVID-19. Now, if you see here, COVID-19, I've got so many results, right? Let me look at notebooks alone. Everybody from the onset of this have started blogging about it, okay? Literally, everyone talks about it. So this is visualization and prediction. But I'll tell you why I may not trust most of this work. It's not that the work is not good, okay? But I don't know the approach, right? I, I cannot validate their approach. Now, this was just updated 18 hours ago, okay? And so many views already. So if you are getting more, almost close to 400,000 views, then yes, okay, maybe this can be trusted. And what did she do? She plotted some charts and did some mobility data for hot, hot, hot spots and worldwide confirmed cases. Okay, she did mostly, as she said here, it's mostly visualization and prediction. So you can start looking at the, her data sets. But at the end of the day, she imported all the necessary libraries and then again, some hidden cells here, here, you can show that, fine. And then she read them, fine. And then at the end, look at her visualization, okay? This is really, really, really interesting, okay? So you could see that. And that, that's it. And mostly, the mostly, remember the topic was more about what? Visualization and prediction. Hence, the end number of graphs. So this is fine. But the question is, can I say for sure what her findings were correct? All right? So if you have that inquisitive nature, get back here and brainstorm with relevant with relevant researchers, okay? You can actually collaborate, collaborate with them. Now, let's look at COVID-19 diagnosis and you understand what I mean now. So there are 51 papers with code, one benchmark, and nine data sets. So there is even a, a data set called, okay, okay, the best method is called COVID CT net, right? Now, let's look at all this. So first thing you see the data set, okay? COVID DGI, COVID-19 image collection, COVID-19 CT, the chest X-ray images. This is the computed chromography and sex X-ray, okay, COVID-19 CT. Let's look at all the data sets first. Now, in all the data sets, you see, right? COVID city, COVID this, COVID that, COVID that. Fine. So I can get back here. Okay. And now look at the papers. Because my interest is, I want to match the data set. Okay. I want to match the research work with the paper. So I want to match the paper with the code. Both of them are here. Can you see that? COVID-19 image data collection. Now this is Taylor Deep Neural, Deep CNN. Okay. For the detection of COVID-19 cases from chest X-ray images. This was last year. Okay. And by again, power down I on TensorFlow, okay? Now, you look at, let's look at the paper. Now, let's look at the paper and the code simultaneously. One thing I want you to understand here is, you see, most of them, you get some ranking, okay? Let me see if anyone has rank here. Um, see, okay, this one says, pre-training pre -train, pre with a data set of similar nature further improve the accuracy to 98.3 and 98.6 respectively. So they use CT scans mostly and they looked into most of the problems there as in they did their diagnosis based on that. Now, you see uh, almost every paper here has an accompanying code. So the f my interest was on this first one, second one, right? So this is the paper, okay? So you can literally download the entire paper. Now let's get the PDF of this paper. Now you see here, here we have the paper and then let me also open the code. Now, the code, you could literally get this. This is the official one, right? And these are maybe other ones which were contributed by collaborators, okay? And then, now, the first one is the official one. It has, it has been starred 962 times. Now, you see there, right? So, we are not going to look into how you take this uh, code and modify it and things like that. But when you look at the code, you'll be able to understand how the research proceeded okay in the direction in which the research went okay proceeded all right so you see here everything is there right and you could literally see quick links whatever they referred to right and now you see here the core team did you see that so canada and vision image research group university of waterloo canada look at all them so all of them so when you see all this then that really validates yes that really reinforces the, my findings that yes, this paper can be trusted, right? And they calculated the sensitivity and reported it here. Almost 100%, almost 100%. You see that? See, PPV was 99% on COVID-19. Sorry, you see? So almost 100% accuracy. And this, we can definitely say for sure, this paper is worth looking into because of what the collaboration and the loss of data processing, I mean, the loss of training that went into this, right? Fine. And purely, you see, purely on Python. Can you see that? Purely on Python. Okay? Fine. Now, 
This is done and this is the paper. And this paper was also published on Archiv, okay? And from the Department of this and that. And lots of them were there, okay? So it was called COVIDnet, a tailored deep neural network designed for detection of COVID-19 cases from chest X-ray images. Fine. So this is it. And there we go. So what, let's just understand what we just did now. So we started by first looking at what this awesome repository called Kegel. Right? So we've seen the awesome repositories. We've seen the website. We've taken some case studies as well. We tried to understand most of the projects from there. And then we went ahead to understanding the paper. So it's called this collective repository that has lots of awesome projects over there. And now I believe you have a clear picture of how to get started with most of your projects. Now, I want to ask you this honest question. Have you subscribed? <laughs> oh, why don't you subscribe? And when will you subscribe to this channel? So can you help me by doing this right away? Yes? And feel free to get to the comment section below and tell me what you think that I missed out in today's tutorial. Did I over-exaggerate? Are there things that I could have said which I did not say? Did I go outside what was planned? Because I, I might have done that. So I want this to be a kind of engaging, all right? So please, I need you to go to the comments right away and share your thoughts, right? And I will look into most of them and get back to you at the earliest. Until I come your way next time, I want you to stay home, stay safe, and happy viewing. Oh, no. Let's enjoy this for song before we leave, all right? So this time around, we are going to Africa, right? <laughs> are you ready? Are you ready? Okay. <laughs>